This is a 2025 Nissan Kicks SR all-wheel drive. Nissan's second generation subcompact crossover SUV that's much more like an SUV than the outgoing generation, which, by the way, first arrived for the 2018 model year. What makes it more SUV-like? Well, it's bigger, it's higher off the ground, and it now offers all-wheel drive. There are three trims for the second generation Nissan Kicks, the base S, the middle of the road SV, and this top of the line SR. It's great that the Nissan Kicks has grown for 2025, but what I wanna know is, does the Nissan Kicks growth spurt make it any better? Let's find out. I review all kinds of cars and I have fun every time. Please subscribe and join me. The base price for a front wheel drive 2025 Nissan Kicks S is $23,220. Going all wheel drive is available on each trim and on the S and SR, it costs $1,500 to do so, but on the SV, it's an additional $1,650. And that's because in the SV, when you go from front to all wheel drive, you also switch from steel to aluminum wheels, and that adds an extra $150. Fun fact. Going for the top of the line SR trim with all wheel drive raises the price to $29,070. And my test car did have the premium package and a couple other of small options and costs $31,875. All right, with that, now is a good time for me to pull over and show you around and inside and under the hood of this brand new second generation Kicks. Hopefully I won't get too wet. Looking at the Kicks from the front, this is definitely a better looking car than the first generation, at least in my opinion. It's more squared off, more rugged, and it has some cool features. We have the main beam headlights right here, but then we have additional running lamps right here that kind of bake into the front grille, which has these nice three horizontal slots that go across the grille. And this lower bumper, in honor of it being called the Kicks, this is supposed to emulate the sole of a shoe a little bit, having a bit of a pattern. So you tell me, how do these to line up and the hood itself maybe it's a little easier to see when it's not wet but has this interesting bump baked into it right here to begin the uh, fender flare for the front axle and has a relatively smooth shape otherwise but there's definitely more to talk about under the hood well there it is your two liter four cylinder engine transversely mounted or side to side like that I appreciate that there's not any kind of engine shroud there. It's actually exposed. You can see the inner workings that's going on here. This used to be a 1.6 liter engine. So we're going up from 1.6 to two liters and we get 141 horsepower and 140 pound feet of torque as a result, a nice bump in both categories. And yeah, for a vehicle this size, this is a perfectly adequate engine. Finally, Windshield washer fluid is on the passenger side, easy to get to right here. Looking at the car in profile, you can see that it is still basically the same shape as the first generation Kicks. However, this is a fair amount larger than the first generation Kicks, and it does have more ground clearance. It is now 8.4 inches of ground clearance. That's up from seven inches from the first generation model. This particular Kicks is painted in deep blue pearl, and it's a perfectly lovely color. One nice little bit right here, the base of the side view mirror right here says Kicks on it. That's nice. Here, let me show you closer up. I will go ahead and put the dimensions up on the screen so you can check that out right now and let you know that I have a lot more information in the description. Because this is the top SR trim, we get 19 inch aluminum wheels to look at. The base S trim does get a 16 inch steel wheel. However, this is not the stock Nissan Kicks 19 inch aluminum wheel. This is the aftermarket Nissan Kicks aluminum wheel. And I believe it costs around $600 extra. I'll show you a picture of the stock aluminum wheel right now so you can see what that is. And yes, this is a square setup. The wheels and tires in back are the same size as what's in front. 
looking at the kicks from the rear it's got a pretty interesting shape here tastefully sized roof mounted spoiler pretty steeply raked rear windshield and then this interesting formation you have the tail lights right here they end here but this black plastic carries on right across the full width to the other end of the tail lights so it adds an interesting bit of texture to the rear end and finally something i'm very happy to see no frills just a single exhaust pipe down here just as it should be no need to draw attention to itself all right let's take a look inside lift the tailgate to see 30 cubic feet of storage behind the second row and a nice wide space to put it in you also have this privacy panel right here and beneath the floor you do have extra space right here but you can option to get a spare tire and that basically replaces this and takes away that extra space underneath the floor of course the second row is easy to put down pull a couple of levers and you have 60 cubic feet of storage behind the first row and take the privacy panel off to see how much space that is i do think it would be a tiny touch on the tight side i don't have it with me but i do bet my bike would fit either way for an suv this size that's a good amount of space all right let's check out that second row because the nissan kicks is bigger there is more space inside and that definitely includes the second row and even from just looking at it you can see it looks reasonably spacious considering its size because this is an sr trim we have this nice red cross stitching right here and you can see from here that we actually have the premium package which gives us the optional bose stereo system i am five feet 11 inches tall and as you can see i've got a good two or three inches of knee room right there i do also have headroom despite this panoramic moonroof right here also part of the premium package and the seat bottoms are pretty high so i have pretty darn decent thigh support put all that together i have less than a 90 degree bend in my knees it's actually pretty comfortable back here i do also have two usb type c ports right here comfortable seats and a center armrest with cup holders so yeah it's actually pretty darn comfortable back here adults could be in the second row no problem but let's go to the front we do of course have more space in the front as well and continued use of that red cross stitching right here usual controls on the door and manual operating controls on the seat you do have four aft seat height and seat back so it's okay and here's another look at the seats themselves with a nice red pattern and that red cross stitching i mentioned you can manually adjust the tilt and telescope of the steering wheel right here the steering wheel is actually a pretty small diameter and it has a flat bottom right here and is a pretty darn decently fat rim to hold on to and we do have cruise control options on the right media control options on the left because this is the top sr trim we have a 12.3 inch digital instrument cluster and a second 12.3 inch center display the middle of the road sv trim gets this center display but a seven inch digital instrument cluster and the base s trim gets seven inch screens for both push button start is right here there is the 12.3 inch instrument cluster lit up and there is the 12.3 inch center display lit up and this center display does also include wireless apple carplay and wireless android auto if you have the seven inch screen in the base s you still get apple carplay and android auto but it is wired this is a single zone climate control system right here the sv and sr trims also get these wireless smartphone charger right here and we do also have two more usb type c ports right there an electric parking brake pretty standard looking prindle and our drive mode switch right there behind that we have two nice and deep cup holders and it gets narrower as it goes down and behind that we do have another smaller pit of storage right there looking up we do have a sunglasses holder a couple of lights and here are the controls for the panoramic moonroof right here and even for the kicks i was impressed to see that we do have an electric privacy panel right there it's lovely it's also part of the $1,950 premium package. That premium package also adds these heated seats right here 
and the Bose audio system. It also adds the heated steering wheel and remote engine start on the key fob as well. Not to mention a couple other bits and bobs. All right, let's talk drive modes. You have a few, get through them right here. You have sport, standard, eco, and snow modes. Now the snow mode is only available if you have all wheel drive, but since we do, we have the snow mode. We will be spending most of our time in the standard driving mode, but sure, why not? Let's test out sport and maybe eco as well. But to do that, we have to get back to the drive. So let's get back to the drive. By the way, I should have mentioned right at the top and regular viewers would have noticed that I am not on my usual route or my usual spot or my usual dryness. <laughs> I am in Michigan, but a guest of Nissan for a special trip and that has put me off route just a little bit and compressed my timeline as well, but that's okay. I'm very happy to get the chance to drive this car and I'll take as much time as they can give me. That said, where it does 141 horsepower and 140 pound feet of torque come from well like i showed you under the hood it is a two liter four cylinder engine transversely mounted it is inherently a front wheel drive suv still it is also a nice bump up in displacement compared to the first generation nissan kicks which may do with a 1.6 liter four cylinder engine as a result we do get 19 more horsepower and 26 more pound feet of torque that is a healthy bump now this kicks is bigger which means it is also heavier but the added horsepower and torque is noticeable and appreciated and it is a relatively simple engine considering the modern era it does run on a reasonably high 11.7 to 1 compression ratio and thankfully it does also run on regular gasoline unchanged compared to the first generation nissan kicks this does still have a continuously variable transmission nissan calls it xtronic but nissan was quick to point out that this is a new continuously variable transmission it does have a wider ratio range and it has both a higher ratio range for better off the line starts and a lower ratio range for lower rpm highway cruising of course, the biggest and most welcome change is that Nissan does now offer all wheel drive on the Nissan Kicks. And that is, like I said earlier, on every trim. And considering everything, it's not that expensive of a bump either. If you wanna build a crossover SUV, even a subcompact crossover SUV, at least offering all wheel drive seems like a must to me. And maybe one of the reasons why it seems like a must is because I live in Michigan, it gets cold here, it gets snowy here, and in the snow, especially when you need to get uphill, all-wheel drive can be very helpful. The first generation Nissan Kicks was front-wheel drive only, and that did limit its appeal in certain parts of the country. And I have to say that generally, I find this to be a perfectly reasonable powertrain. I'm currently in the normal driving mode. If I floor the accelerator, there's a bit of a delay for the ratios to sort themselves out, but then yeah, power's pretty adequate. This is actually pretty decent considering everything. You can definitely feel more torque, that helps out right away. And then when the power gets moving, when the engine gets spinning, you get a little bit more power as well. Now, this being a continuously variable transmission, there are still some weird surges in the acceleration. It's not this linear power delivery. Once you get engaging, because the way the cones work in the transmission eh, makes it just a little wonky, but generally it's okay. Now, that was the normal driving mode. If I put it in sport, even just putting it in sport, you can feel that the transmission automatically puts you in a different ratio, so it's snappier. I floor the accelerator. Yeah. Kickdown is maybe a little bit better, about the same, but the revs do get up there a little bit faster because it's already starting at a higher rev range, and that's appreciated. Now, if I go the other way and go to the eco driving mode and floor the accelerator again, It's pretty close to standard actually. So the eco driving mode definitely changes the throttle map. It's got a slower throttle tip in. And in a lot of ways, I actually appreciate that. But if you just stomp on the accelerator, you'll still get a pretty reasonable kick down and get moving just fine. Now, let me be clear about something. This is not fast. <laughs> You're never gonna be like, whoa. <laughs> 
nothing close to that. 141 horsepower in a more than 3,000 pound crossover SUV with all wheel drive, it's just not gonna do that. But it's been perfectly adequate for all the driving conditions I've been in thus far, and I think that it suits this car much better than the 1.6 liter did for the first kicks, even though that one was smaller. And even with the bigger engine, you still get pretty darn reasonable fuel economy. With the all wheel drive kicks, you get 27 miles to the gallon in the city, 34 miles to the gallon on the highway, 30 combined. If you instead go with the front wheel drive model kicks, each number goes up by one, 28, 35, 31. Yeah, for an SUV with this much space inside, those are pretty healthy numbers. As important as fuel economy is, is still not as much fun as accelerating, even with a continuously variable transmission, yada, yada, yada. Of course I had to test that. Let me show you right now. All right, everybody, time for an acceleration test. I do have the Nissan Kicks in the sport driving mode and we'll just see how it goes. Okay, coming to a complete stop. Foot on the brake, foot on the accelerator. About 2000 RPM, off the brake. Oh, nope, not bad, nope, <laughs> come on. There we go, now it's building up. There we go, yeah. Not groundbreaking, but perfectly acceptable acceleration for this subcompact crossover SUV. We got a nice little kickback right at the launch, but then it did fall off a little bit as the continuously variable transmission was gaining its footing. But once we got the revs up, we accelerated off just fine. All right, let's dig into the chassis. This is an all new chassis and it is a noticeably improved chassis. This is actually a global B-segment chassis from Renault. Nissan and Renault are combined now. That was a big thing a few years ago. And this is a Nissan chassis. It is a big improvement over the first generation Kicks chassis. The structure feels more solid, more rigid, and that makes it just handle the road better. Like I said, it is also bigger. That's bigger in every dimension. It is 2.3 inches longer, 1.6 inches wider, nearly an inch taller, and rides on a 1.8 inch longer wheelbase. But there's some weird things going on here. It is struts up front, which is a really common suspension geometry for this class of car. But if you get front wheel drive, it is a solid rear axle. It is a twist beam rear axle. Now that is a perfectly reasonable suspension geometry, offers a lot of space, but it does limit ride quality a little bit. However, if you get the all wheel drive kicks, you get an independent multi-link suspension for the rear axle. So if you get an all wheel drive kicks, you also get a better suspension geometry for better ride quality. Nissan says that also improves the flexibility of the all wheel drive system itself. And I have no reason to doubt that, but the fact of the matter is, have an independent rear axle just helps with ride quality, generally speaking. It doesn't mean it's necessarily bad without one, but it's a lot easier to be good with one. And I have to say, the ride so far, in my opinion, has been a real nice compromise between ride and handling. It's maybe the tiniest touch on the firm side, but generally plenty composed over bumps and heaves in the road and things like that. And yet the steering is faster than before. So the kicks is more responsive than it used to be despite being bigger. And you do not have a bunch of under damp suspension here causing a bunch of roll or some weird wobbles. It feels nice and firm going around the corner. Now you have some lean of course, but it's not excessive. For some, the ride might be the tiniest bit on the stiff side, but for me, it is A-OK. -okay. And the more solid structure does help make this car a little bit quieter. Now, it is by no means quiet, but Nissan did add thicker carpeting, more sound insulation, and some liners around the fender to help take out road noise. For a mainstream B-segment SUV, I think it's plenty competitive, maybe even on the high end for this class, it's pretty good. And that's true on roads like this and on the interstate. I did test it there as well. Let me show you that. All right, everybody, time for a quick stint on the interstate. But first, I wanted to quickly show you the controls for the Nissan for interstate driving. On the right side of the steering wheel, we have the usual controls right here. This is the adaptive cruise control right here and then distance right here. 
But because we have ProPilot Assist, we, we also have this button right here, which is to the left of the steering wheel. That's the steering wheel heater. And then that is the lane centering button. You can turn that on and off. We have ProPilot Assist and ProPilot Assist offers lane centering. And yes, I will have that on for this test. Okay, cruise control is set at 78 miles an hour to go with traffic. And I'm turning on the steering assist now. All right, so the steering assist is on and I have a little steering wheel right here to indicate that it is on right next to the distance control and the speed that is set. Here, let me briefly show you what I'm talking about. It's that steering button right there, right next to the distance and the speed set for the speedometer. We're going through a curve right now and that's why we're not quite going 78 miles an hour. Straightening out. There, 78. We do not have an assistance screen, but we do have an easy to read digital instrument cluster screen to look at right now, right there. So we're currently going a little under 78 right now because we're running into a fair amount of traffic. It is close to rush hour, but the engine is still turning around 2000 RPM. Because it's a CVT, it can be closer to 2000 RPM at the various interstate speeds actually. So we're seeing around 2000 RPM. And at that speed, the engine is generally in the background. It's a little bit louder right now because we're going uphill. Okay, back up to 78 miles an hour. And yes, still turning at 2000 RPM. And yeah, it's pretty much in the background. Now, this is a B segment mainstream crossover SUV. It's not quiet in here. You can hear a little bit of wind noise. You can hear a fair amount of road noise, but it is definitely better than the first generation Nissan Kicks. And Nissan, as I mentioned, did add more sound insulation and thicker carpeting and things like that. And that brings the Kicks up to a good competitive place when it comes to cabin isolation on the interstate. There's a big tanker truck to my right. That's real easy to hear and you can hear the noise of the tires a little bit. But honestly, considering the price of this car and the segment that it's competing in and the fact that it's rush hour traffic, I'd say it's competitive. Also, we do have the Nissan Zero Gravity seats and they are generally comfortable. I find good support in these seats and I'm generally comfortable in them even though there's not adjustable lumbar. And what's interesting for this second generation kicks is Nissan says you have zero gravity seats in the first and second rows. The only passenger that wouldn't have a zero gravity seat is the middle rear passenger. That's interesting to me. Now, this is a modern Nissan, so of course we do have plenty of driving aids. It's called Nissan Safety Shield 360. It is standard across the board, and it does include a healthy list of things. I'll put that up on the screen right now. But because I have this Nissan SR, I do also have the Pro Pilot Assist, and that's what gets me the things like the steering assist, which helps with lane centering and that kind of stuff. Speaking of which, I'll take my hands off the wheel right now. And yeah, it's doing its work and we are staying pretty well centered in the lane. Now we're going straight night now, but I deliberately started kind of off center and you can hear it warning me that we're going off the lane. But then if I let go of the wheel, it does get us back to center pretty well. So yeah, it's a pretty good system. All in all, in terms of the space you have in here, in terms of the technology you have in here, the USB ports, the seats, and the reasonable cabin isolation, not to mention the space for adults in the second row as well. Yeah, I'd say this is a pretty darn commendable highway cruiser. So what do I think of this second generation 2025 Nissan Kicks? Well, to start, it looks way better. <laughs> and that's like 80% of the job done right there. It is bigger but it's a useful amount of bigger. You get a lot of space in the cargo area, good space in the front row, and actually pretty darn good space in the second row as well. I do think this would be a comfortable road trip car for four adults. It's also a very good thing that Nissan added all wheel drive for something you're gonna call an SUV. It just makes sense to be able to offer the traction of all wheel drive. Really, that was a limitation from before and Nissan has corrected it. And it's priced well. 
Now, this particular car, my test car, is more than 30 grand, but it is fully loaded, top of the line, even has the accessory wheels, etc., etc. You can get an all wheel drive SR Trim Nissan Kicks for under 30 grand. In this market, in today's market, that is a pretty darn reasonable price. And to get one of these starting at under 25, that's pretty impressive. This Nissan Kicks is not the best driving subcompact crossover SUV, but it's definitely a much better driving subcompact crossover SUV and does offer a lot of nice amenities and features to make it a pretty compelling option. I'm Robin Warner. Thank you very much for watching.